channel. I am Aishwarya and here we are with another very interesting question that I am sure some of you would have wondered. How is it in that these rocky areas we find some plants growing on rocks? I mean we normally find them growing on land. But imagine on these big rocky boulders you find some plants growing as you observe here. How are they able to grow? We will find the answer to this question in under 5 minutes. So stay tuned till the end of the class to find the answer. But of course if this is the first time that you are visiting our channel, I would like to say welcome to your very own 6 to 8 channel. We are a small family and we are always here for you no matter what and of course we've got you covered because we come up with some amazing academic sessions, some interesting questions that you must think about for which we give you the answers and so much more. And all that we ask of you is to stay subscribed to our channel. Hit that like button right away, hit the bell icon for notifications, share this with your friends if you find it interesting. So now of course without wasting any more time, we'll get started with the question that we have with us. How is it that some plants are able to grow in rocky areas? Now when we talk about plants, right, or as a matter of fact when we talk about life, life always finds a way. And even in the harshest of conditions, we know that living organisms have the ability to adapt to their surroundings. But does this mean that these plants are adapting to their surroundings? Well, yes and no, right? So there are a lot of things that happen for these plants to grow in these rocky areas. And to understand this, we will revisit a very important concept and that is of weathering. Now we know that weathering is nothing but a process by which there is breakdown of rocks on the earth's surface due to some natural conditions. And weathering is extremely essential for the formation of soil. So effectively soil is formed by the weathering of these big rocks. Now let's assume that this is the process that is in place. And to understand this better, we are going to take an example. Now here as you can see we have a sidewalk, right? And it's, it's a very stony sidewalk that is there. Now this stony sidewalk has some cracks on it, right? So these cracks are formed either due to, you know, exposure to maybe some wind or right? Or maybe some heavy rains would have happened effectively over time resulting in the formation of these cracks, right? So they've not just come up as it is but it has happened over a period of time. Now what we observe is that there are some animals around in the area. So we observe a bird but there are so many little animals as well, right? We find squirrels running around, right? Maybe some small cats running around. Anyway, the thing is that as these animals go, we know that animals also require food. So whether they're these birds or squirrels, they of course require food and they feed on some nuts or they may feed on, you know, small fruits that are there. And on the way, they tend to drop seeds, right? So let's assume that as this bird went by, it dropped a seed and it happened to fall on a crack. Now what's going to happen is that the seed is going to remain here and it's inside the crack. But of course this is not very ideal for the seed to germinate and grow because we know that it requires air, it requires water, it requires nutrients and it requires soil, right? Now we know that air of course is provided in and around the surrounding. Right? And let's assume that it's constantly raining in this area or it's exposed to some high rains that now it has got water or the necessary water it requires. But then again we see that soil is necessary. Now this is something that happens in the real world, right? Now if this were to be a big rock and not a sidewalk but rather this is a huge rock instead. We see that due to the constant exposure of winds, of some biotic factors like heavy rains, this crack will start to get bigger, right? And we see that the rocks will slowly start to get broken down into soil. And we know that now this will be provided with soil. But soil also requires nutrients, right? And you know, these plants need nutrients to grow. So how exactly are these nutrients coming into the picture? Well, we have an answer for that as well. 
Now you see in these big rocks, we find various other substances, right? We find quartz, feldspar, we have calcite and so much more as you see on the examples. Now they are all made up of different minerals put together. And as the rocks start to weather down, what we observe is that these minerals will also start to get weathered down, which means now your soil gets enriched with all of this. And eventually now you have all your conditions. You have soil, right? Maybe not to the amount that you see in a field, but little amount for the plant to survive. It has air, water, right? It has all the ideal necessary conditions. And eventually the seed will then germinate and we, it grows into a plant. Which is why in these extreme rocky surfaces, we still find traces of life because of the fact that the weathering of rocks take place. Maybe not to the greatest extent, but to the slightest of extents that allows life to thrive there. So with this, of course, we found the answer to the question that we had asked in the beginning of the class today. Now, before I wind up, I am sure all of you would have heard about the Baiju Scholarship Test. Now, Baiju Scholarship Test or BST is your chance to actually witness and be a champion. Now, this is going to pave a way for your dreams, whether it is to be a scientist or whether to be a researcher or you want to be an engineer, right? So we request you to take a part of the BST because we will, of course, as a result of taking BST, if you do score the necessary marks, you will be able, you win a chance to get the scholarship. And of course, the most coveted Australia edition where the top three students will be able to fly to Australia to watch the T20 match live with their guardian. So this registration is absolutely free. The link is there in the description box. So do not waste any more time. Go and hit that link and click it. Yes. So now, of course, in order. To prepare for the BST and to make sure that you have thorough concept understanding, we also have the Baiju's mini learning program for you. Where you can take the mini learning program where you will have a set of few classes where you will witness the two teacher advantage. And if you are among the first 500 users, then you can apply the YT first code and you can avail this program for free. You will have a lot of post class assessments. You will be able to have live doubt solving and a lot more. So you can definitely try this out and I would definitely recommend this. So now, of course, you know that we've got you covered no matter what. So to show us your love, please hit that like button, share it with your friends and stay subscribed to our channel for more such interesting questions and for more such interesting videos. Hoping to see you all very soon again. Bye bye.